Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We're here today on the weekend edition of the Cabral Concept. These are our Cabral host calls, answering our community's questions, stepping into your home every single weekend and be, hopefully be able to bring you uh, the best of wellness, weight loss, weight gain, anti-aging, you name it. And the goal is always to not provide you with medical advice, medical cures, treatment plans, medical diagnosis, but actually with an underlying root cause. So the goal is to begin to understand why it is that your body's feeling the symptoms that it's feeling. Because if you can start to figure out what the underlying root cause is, then you can go about rebalancing that particular issue where then the body begins to heal. And if the body begins to heal, it cannot be unhealthy. It cannot be in this diseased state that is not natural for the body. A disease of the body is not natural. It's literally out of ease. So what I want to do is try to help take you through where you may want to look first uh, or second or third if you have already done some searching on your own and uh, always happy to be able to do that. So once again, thanks so much for tuning in. All right, let's dive right into it right now. Buffy is the first question I have here today. She says, hi, I've been diagnosed with a uterine fibroid. I'm 51 years old, a woman, and I'm entering or approaching menopause. Is there any certain test or lab you recommend that I complete? I'm not sure where to start with this. Also, do you have any dietary recommendations? I eat mostly a plant-based diet, but do have chicken or beef on occasion. I don't like fish at all. I also only recently found you on YouTube and have been listening and watching your show as much as possible. Happy to help, Buffy. Thanks for writing in. I know you wrote in about two months ago now. Um, so again, it takes anywhere around 10 to 12 weeks to get to people's questions just because of the queue that we have lined up with the amount of people, but happy to get to yours. So my recommendation is that if you've only ever done blood work testing your whole life with your PCP, great, continue to do it, but start to look deep in, into your own health. And so what I recommend for that is something called the Big Five Labs. stephencabral.com forward slash big five. And it's just B-I-G, the number five. And why that's important is you start to look at then hormone levels, but not just, okay, what's my estrogen, right? It's how does my estrogen relate to progesterone? How does it relate to testosterone? What about cortisol? What about thyroid? And we'll look at gut issues. And we'll look at food sensitivities. We'll look at heavy metals. We'll look at all the different things that could cause inflammation in your body. So it's really invaluable. If you're not able to run the big five, uh, for you, I'd probably first start with the stress mood and metabolism. That's a hormone-based test. Um, and then the starter kit, if you kind of want an add-on from there. All right, so that's what I would do first. Dietary recommendations come with the labs. Um, you can check out my podcast on overall general dietary recommendations. But what we'd like to do is customize something a little bit more for you based on your own bio-individuality, which we learn about when we run these at-home labs. So hopefully that's helpful. Thank you, Buffy, for writing in. Jam is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. Firstly, thank you for everything you do. Your podcast has helped me so much, and I always recommend my family and friends listen to you to get their queries on their health answered. Thank you, Jam. I have experienced very mild hair loss that I've noticed after a very stressful time in my life. My trichocologist uh, advised I had telogen effluvium, However, it was combined with redness, scaling, and itchy symptoms. My dermatologist suggested some creams or ointments, shampoos, etc. Eventually, this being approximately two years ago, symptoms went away, and I assumed it was a bout of inflammation due to stress. Now it has returned, so I decided to go through with the biopsy, and it showed I have uh, lichens, plantar polaris. Can you shed light on this and how I can manage and prevent the hair loss? Yes. So happy to help. So... You know, just to take the mystery out of these things, because sometimes medical speak makes it sound more, you know, interesting and sophisticated than it really is. Telogen is just one of the three, or depending on how you want to classify it, four phases of hair growth and loss. 
I have a whole podcast on that. Um, if you want to check out the different phases of hair growth and loss, uh, the antigen, catagen, telogen, and exogen phases, um, you can do that. That's just at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Or um, always ask at cabralsupportgroup.com. We'll have you f- help you find those shows. So telogen is just the raise, rest phase of hair growth, meaning like there's no growth happening. So the body's still losing hairs, but it's not growing more. And um, so that's not that interesting, right? Yeah, you know your hair's not growing. So that's what I always like to say. It's, it's not as interesting as people make it seem. Um, the lichen-based issues can happen anywhere in the body, typically yeast, fungal-based in nature, and that has to do with overall immune system function, as well as potentially yeast overgrowth. Now, the yeast fungal overgrowth could be specific to the scalp region, uh, but it could also be more systemic, like gut-based. So what I recommend, if possible, is running the candida uh, mood and metabolism test. If you only run one, and I would look for it, gut-based as well, and go from there. I would run the starter kit, which includes that. If not, just run the candida metabolic vitamins test. That's what it's called, candida metabolic vitamins test. I don't know why I threw the word mood in there. It does have neurotransmitters, but <laughs> disregard that. Uh, and you can find those at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. That's where I would start for sure. Yeah. And then I've got lots of stuff for topical um, for the hair. Uh, apple cider vinegar you know, can be a great one for pH balance of the scalp, coconut oil can be, sesame oil. I've got all these at stephencabral.com slash hair dash loss. stephencabral.com slash hair dash loss. It's everything I know all in one article about regrowing your hair, stopping hair loss, and all the different reasons for it. Jasmine or Yasmin is up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. First of all, thank you so much for all of the free knowledge you provide to the world. I feel so empowered to take on health issues uh, autonomously because of you and the information and trustworthy products you provide. Thank you, Jasmine. My question is about topical retinol skincare products. These can be over-the-counter or prescribed by a dermatologist, which would namely be tretinoin. I have seen so many people have incredible results with retinol or vitamin A derivatives. It almost seems too good to be true. What are the side effects, if any? Is it safe to use? Thank you. Okay, happy to tackle this one. Don't know the specific product you're talking about. Certainly in the future, I'll check it out. So here's what I can tell you, though, about retin, uh, Retin-A or Retinol-A-based products. Okay, so they're the synthetic form of vitamin A. Doesn't mean it can't work, but in high dosages, like Accutane or others, it could be damaging to the liver. Vitamin A toxicity is a real thing. It's actually quite dangerous. Vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin. We have to be careful not to overdo it. You don't want to overdo vitamin D, vitamin K, vitamin E, or vitamin A. Now, luckily, you can get a good amount of vitamin A and it's not toxic. But having said that, um, I have seen it be quite toxic prescription-wise, not as much so Uh, skin-wise, however, over time, it could build up in your system because your skin, right, is, well, it's a dermal layer that's subcutaneous and allows the nutrients that you put on it to be absorbed to a degree into your bloodstream. So, um, but vitamin A works. I'm not gonna say that it doesn't. Vitamin A works for anti-aging-based skincare. If, if it's me, because I can only give me advice, I can't give other people you know, medical advice, um, I would not use it internally. But to a degree, I don't have an issue with aging skin using some smaller amounts of vitamin A. All right? So hopefully that was helpful. Emma is up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl. Thank you so much for everything you do. My question is regarding the Dutch hormone test. I've heard you say that you don't use it and that It isn't as reliable as a saliva test, which I completely understand and respect. However, I hear many functional medicine practitioners and doctors who do use it say why they love it. The reason being that they can see which pathways certain estrogens are going down. 2OH, 4, 16, uh, they may see that 1 and 2 are going down the 4OH pathway being associated with DNA damage or breast cancer and methylation. Isn't there benefit of knowing that information to do then dive deeper into why that's happening as opposed to the saliva test, which doesn't show that information. Thank you. Um, Yeah, I mean, so it's not that I, here's the thing. It's not that I don't think the Dutch test is valuable. I'm not saying that. I get to run one hormones test with 
my clients and people all over the world. And it's absolutely going to be a combination uh, saliva-based and blood spot because I, I can get the best validated information. Do I think there's value in seeing which pathway estrogen or even like dihydrotestosterone pathways go down? Sure. But honestly, it doesn't sway my decision in any way, shape, or form as to what I'm going to do if there's high estrogen or low progesterone or high testosterone in women. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like, because I'm correcting the underlying root cause imbalance. I think the reason why a lot of functional medicine practitioners who are medical doctors like to see some of that is because then they will start doing more conventional medicine-based treatments. But for me, where is the benefit to telling someone that it's going down the breast cancer pathway? I don't see that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, oh, estrogen's high or there's estrogen dominance. I'm going to figure out why it's high, not just try to block it which is what most functional medicine and conventional medicine doctors do, right? Because, and again, I don't want to be, this is not all-encompassing because I have many colleagues that are MDs and they're phenomenal, fantastic, brilliant. But, you know, if you're trained in a pill for every ill, you're saying, oh, there's pathway, we can block that with this. We can block that with this medication. We can do this. Not for me. We're doing functional medicine detox. We're getting in more cruciferous vegetables. We're using more uh, natural detox-based methods. We're using I3C. We're using uh, indole 3 carbonol. I just said that. We're using, what else? We're using DIM. Uh, so we're doing all the things that we should be doing. High testosterone in women. Why is there high testosterone? Okay, we're looking at potentially higher levels of androgens from what? Ex uh, exacerbated stress. So I'm looking at underlying root causes to normalize things without having to create palliative-based treatments. And I hope that makes sense. But I have no problem using people using that other test. Really don't at all. No problem at all. And if they're running an at-home lab test, guess what I am? Happy, right? Happy that we're running at-home lab tests. So please keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Because again, we're all after the same goal. As long as the goal though, with my fellow functional medicine practitioners, is to find the underlying root cause and not just put Band-Aids on symptoms, right? That's, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. Okay. Because again, when you heal the body, you heal the body. It's not going down the wrong pathways. I just want to share that. Like it's always going down different pathways, but not just to very small levels. You're always going to be creating testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, but what to, to what degree, right? So again, I want to share that with you and, and all um, with all due respect to everyone in this great field. And you know, if if you like the practitioner, they're doing great work, stick with them. Keep working with them. All right, David's up next. Good morning. I'd like to get some info on using serapeptase for reducing high blood pressure. Thank you. All right. So again, can't give you any medical advice in terms of, you know, you treating anything with a supplement. However, we use a product called proteolytic enzymes that contains serapeptase with natokinase, which is what we use for any vascular-based issues because serapeptase amazing for more proteins and tissue in the blood, and natokinase for fibrin and other cardiovascular issues. So a lot of people are like, I don't know which one I have. That's why we combine both. So you can find the product we use. It's called Proteolytic Enzymes at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. Just use the search box. If it's not available in your country, we can't ship to you, although we ship to 27 countries, and, or you just want to go with a different brand, totally fine with me. Just keep that in mind, totally fine. Uh, just look at the ingredients that we use. Look at the dosages, try to match it up, all right? So that's what we do. But remember, high blood pressure also has an underlying root cause. And yes, one of those is extra fibrinogen. It's hardening of the arteries. It's all of those things. So yeah, that's, that is one root cause. And um, again, I'm not saying this treats high blood pressure, but 16 weeks on proteolytic enzymes, two in the morning and two before bed, you know, two upon waking, two before bed um, can be very helpful for people. So, but we want to look at cortisol levels. We want to look at heavy metals. We want to look at uh, magnesium to calcium imbalances. We want to look at sodium to potassium imbalances. So if you can, run the big five, all right? Run the big five if possible, as that'll give you all the underlying root causes. All right, let's do one more question. We're having fun getting to questions from the community. This one's from Chris. Chris says, hi, Dr. Brawl. Absolutely love anything you are doing for the world. 
Thank you, Chris, appreciate that. I just have a question regarding silica dust. I work in construction, and although I do everything I can to prevent inhaling the dust, it's extremely hard to keep myself from breathing in some dust every day. I know how deadly silicosis can be, and I was wondering if there are ways that I could help rid the body of any built-up silica in my lungs. I was also wondering if there's a lab test that would indicate if I had high levels of silica in my body. Thanks for everything you do. There is no doubt I've seen this question before. Did Chris ask a question over the last couple of weeks? And if not, you know what? Just may have asked it on one of the million social media channels <laughs> that I'm a part of. And so I may have already answered this, but I'm going to answer it here as well because you just never know uh, where it's coming in. But I definitely didn't dream this one up uh, for sure. So I'm going to give you the answer, even if it's for a second time. Well, maybe someone wasn't tuning in before, and it could help that individual. So you just never know, right? So silica, yeah, silica can be very dangerous to get into the lungs. Um, construction site is one of those ways that you may get it. So, um, and I remember answering this question. It's funny. But the thing is, I answer, like, I'll probably answer on any given day about 100 questions through social media, direct messages, podcast, et cetera. So IHPs, you never know. But you know, this is one of those times where if you know you're being exposed to harmful chemicals, you may actually want to wear a construction mask, the N95 masks that were actually like built for you know, hospital settings and construction. They actually do work. So you might want to look into that um, for sure. You know, and, and you sometimes nobody wants to be the person on the job site wearing the mask. People are like, oh, why are you wearing it? You know, but the thing is, it's for your health. And maybe you share with them what silicosis is and maybe they start to wear one as well. Something to think about. Now, wearing a mask though, you do need to change it out at least once, da once daily because they build up very harmful bacteria from you breathing out. Uh, we weren't even allowed to say that two years ago, but now at least I can say it. You need to change out your mask once to potentially twice a day uh, because of the bacteria that build up, builds up in them. And they actually did a study on children and the bacteria that was building up and it was horrific. Um, anyway. And that's neither here nor there. And um, are there any lab tests? I don't know of any lab tests that test for silicosis. Um, if you know one, share it with the community at cabralsupportgroup.com. That would be amazing. And what else would I recommend? Functional medicine detox. So the uh, stephencabral.com forward slash detox uh, is one place, 21 days. You could do a seven day once a quarter, 21 days once a year. Uh, infrared sauna could be amazing. And then also cardiovascular work to huff that up out of your lungs. So that can be really great as well. EWOT, which I'll be talking about more in the future. If you want to see the EWOT that I use, you can go to highperformancehealth.org forward slash resources. It's one of the first resources. That's amazing for the lungs and capillaries. So yeah, there's a lot of great things that you can do. Detox, heavy metal detox even might help to a degree. Sauna, especially infrared cardiovascular to huff that out. And then your, your typical daily foundational protocol and immunity support. That's, that's what I recommend. All right. Thank you, Chris, for writing in. Appreciate you. And, uh, and again, thank you again. I'll, I appreciate I really do. This is, uh, for me, this is very enjoyable to be able to always get your questions, know that people are, you know, just looking for that second opinion that they don't always just want to rely on taking a medication every day of their life, which is where I was for so many years of my life. And it's just nice to be able to, to see so many like-minded people begin to gather together. And, and hopefully, I get to actually meet you in person this October because we have our big Reimagining uh, Health Summit that you can find out more about at reimagininghealthevent.com. I would love to meet you and so many of the community in person this October. All right, take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. 
head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.